Stepping into Sexuality, Part 2. What beliefs about yourself or sexuality have held you back from stepping into your sexuality? I want you to comment with that, okay? So, I'll tell you mine, and if you just sum it all up, it was judgment from other people. You know, my problem is that I was overweight. I was very overweight, and I believe that fat, meaning body fat, fat is like layers of fear and um, insecurity. You know, it's things that you're holding back so it comes out in your body because you eat the food. Don't. I don't believe it. I know it, actually. I know a lot of people, they're holding back their feelings, their anger, their fear. They're holding back, like, once I let go of the rape completely, I never get, not just the rape, but the judgment of other people and the fear of what people will think of me. I have not gained more than, like, 60 pounds back. Well, actually, since I, I lost, like, 60 pounds, I've gotten through more layers of fear of judgment and things, right? So it was, I had problems in the past, you know, drugs, alcohol, cigarettes, sex before marriage. I was, you know, relying on, uh, basically relying on things other than myself and God and me to um, validate me, you know, to make me feel good. And it, and you know, what's funny is the irony of it all is it all made me feel worse. The food, then gaining weight or just feeling sick and eventually getting cancer because of all the food, the drugs, the alcohol, the pills for anxiety and so-called mental illness and all those things. Uh, all of those things end up making me the boyfriends that beat me because I was having sex with them and they didn't like themselves. So that all that stuff ended up and culminated in me having cancer, sleeping outdoors, getting my master's degree, but all the good things, quitting drugs, quitting alcohol, quitting cigarettes. And once you peel all the layers back, you realize what the truth really is and who you really are. And the more I, you know, things I quit, the more proud I am of myself and the more I realize who I really am. And then I can start to, instead of just deconstructing, constructing things like blowing things up with the bomb boom getting rid of it now I'm constructing things you know so now I see who I really am so the judging you know I have I've had body shaming issues all my life when I was when I had cancer they said I was small and skinny and weak and too small but you know and then when I was overweight I was too too big I was fat I, you know all my life people said you're ugly you're stupid you're crazy you're you're sick you're you know all these things you're worthless and so that's why I do everything I do because I don't want you to think and believe the things that other people say you know I used to think that it was wrong for me to dance um, you know then it was wrong for me to dance in public it was okay to dance but you know just not in public you know all these things that it's not ladylike to dance sometimes the way that I dance sometimes but you know I have all my boobies and my boobs you know my butt has some my boobies and my butt covered and everything like that and you know what even if I didn't I'm pretty sure you know it wouldn't matter as long as I had the good intentions. Although at the same time, I don't know how somebody can have all their body parts out like that and say that they are not having sex or that they don't want it. But, you know, you can. I'm sure you can. You know, I'm sure you can do it. You know, but, um, yeah, people judge because they feel inhibited limited you know they want to inhibit and limit you and because they've been told that they're worthless and they're they're not allowed to dance like that because they're not a lady they're not allowed to walk like that they're not allowed to talk like that they're not allowed to be on video on YouTube or whatever they're not they shouldn't do those things because ladies don't do that or, or whatever you know um, society holds us back they have these uh, uh, expectations you know and their fear, really what it is, is they're afraid. They're afraid to do things, and then when they see other people doing them that and that they want to do, they talk crap on somebody instead of actually doing it themselves, you know? And so because fear is the opposite of love. Now, let me tell you something. Fear is the opposite of love, okay? First John 4.18 says, uh, God is love. So perfect love casts out all fear, and God is love. So don't have fear because fear is from the devil. All right, and also in 2 Timothy, it says, God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of love, power, and of a sound mind. Now, being that I am sound mind, that I know that it is perfectly amazing to dance. Because you know what? David danced in Psalms. David danced and he was celebrating. And you know, he did that more than once, I believe, too. There was a couple times. And um, I celebrate myself because I'm amazing. I'm worth it. I'm the best wife ever. I'm here to empower you. And I celebrate. I love dancing. I love life. Dancing makes you feel good. It has You get endorphins. And I just always have loved music. I always loved dancing. You know, I come out the womb dancing like, oh, hi. 
<laughs> Seriously, I did because my, well, maybe not, you know, dancing, but I loved music. My mom played it for me while I was in the womb, and she said that I was kicking her a lot and that I loved it whenever she put music on. And she said, the louder, the better, you know? So I was like, okay, that's my mom, right? You know, so it's like, yeah, we have these limiting beliefs, but, you know, a lot of people, it's funny how a lot of people say that they're Christians, Catholic, or whatever, but they fail to either read the Bible or just don't practice it because judge not lest ye be judged, right? And and my grandma used to always say that people that accuse you of things are doing those things themselves. Now, first of all, that is a psychological principle everybody knows about mirroring, right? If you don't, look it up. Mirroring. When people, when, like when my ex, I learned this at SafeNet, it was a place for counseling for women who are battered. And when my ex was abusing me, they used to tell me, he's calling you stupid and fat and ugly because he thinks that about himself. So I was like, oh yeah, that's why certain other people do that to me. That's what they think about themselves. So it's, you know, something my grandma used to say to me all the time, people often accuse you of what they're guilty of themselves. And so because of that, it's also in the Bible. I'm going to read you this verse. Ye therefore have no excuse who pass judgment on someone else. For whatever point you judge another, you are condemning yourself because you who pass judgment do the same things. Now, we know that God's judgment against those who do such things is based on truth. So when you, a mere human being, pass judgment on them, you do the same things and you think that you can escape God's judgment. Now, I'm going to put that verse below. Look. So I got to do this. I don't care about my nose running. I got to do this. I'm on a roll. You know, people judge you and they say things about you because they're doing those things themselves. And because they're like, for example, if I'm dancing and somebody calls me a whore, that's what they believe about themselves. You see? So don't believe it. Number one, don't put them down because talking bad to somebody else, the power of life and death is in the tongue and you can make somebody else feel worthy by the words that you say. So what I believe about myself is not just what I believe, it's the truth. I know it. I know I'm amazing. I know I'm gorgeous. I know I'm a genius. I know that I am infinite in value and so are you and that's why I tell you that. That's I know I can do anything I want to do, not because the Bible says it, yes, because of that, but because I started believing and started doing it. So I'm here to show you and empower you by example. And one more note I want to remind you of is that Eleanor Roosevelt, El, uh, Eleanor Roosevelt said, small mind, wait, let me go back. Great minds discuss ideas, mediocre minds discuss events, and small minds discuss people. So which kind of a person do you want to be? A great mind, a mediocre mind, or small mind? Okay, comment below and let me know the number one thing you got out of this video. Or you can also comment and tell me how you found my channel, what's your name, and what judgments are you trying to get over that people, what, what is the, the fear that you'll, the judgment that you're fearing of people, what they'll say about, what do you think they're going to say about you, okay, why are you not doing what you want to do, all right, they are inhibited and limited, don't let them inhibit and limit you because you are infinite in value, you can do anything you want to do, do me a favor, make sure you comment and share this with a friend, all right, my name is Liberty V. Justice. There's no period in my Vs. My victories never end. And yours don't have to either, my friends. Holla. Oh, I. Holla. You're worth it. Thank you.